The other item is annuities. Um, some of you may buy annuities contracts from um, insurers. All right. When you receive funds or sums from the annuity contracts, these are specifically exempt from tax. Okay, it's provided in the Act and you do not need to declare this to the tax authorities either. It's only when you receive annuities from a family trust or a will, right, then you need to actually check the tax implication. There's possibility that you will be taxed on such annuities. Okay. And the last but not least is interest income. As you all know, when you put money in the bank and the bank pays you interest, you don't get tax on it, do you? You don't. Because this is specifically exempt from tax again in the Act. So interest incomes from uh, bank deposits or um, you know, Islamic securities you know, issued by Securities Commission or for those you know, who are eligible to buy the Merdeka bonds from Bank Nagara, okay, those interest income that you receive are exempt from tax. Again, you do not need to declare or report it to the tax authorities. Are we clear so far? All right. So let's talk about other gains. I know this is, may not be relevant for your tax return, all right? <laughs> but I thought I'll, I'll touch on a bit of this. Um, as what Hilda has mentioned, right? We have a very limited capital regime. Let me ask you a question. When we talk about other gains, we are talking about gains that are not income in nature. Right? So it doesn't fall within the Income Tax Act at all. Right? So my question to you is, when you buy and sell shares on the list, uh, from listed companies, do you pay tax on it? You don't. Why you don't pay tax on it? On the gains that you make? Because these are capital gains. All right? And they are not subject to income tax. And capital gains, like what Hilda has mentioned, it's very limited in Malaysia. We have a very limited regime that only focuses on real property. That means your condominiums, your houses and all that. So it's only real property or, real, uh, or shares in real property companies. Okay? So, so the RPGT Act, which comes in force in 1976, basically addresses the tax rates that you need to apply for real property or real pro uh, shares in real property companies. They also have, uh, they also talk about circumstances where it's exempt, all right? What, in what cases you can get a tax exemption and in what cases where, you know, it's determined to be a no gain, no loss situation. That means your sale price is deemed to be equal to your acquisition price. So perhaps let's look at some of these. This is just to give you a bit of historical background on the evolution of RPGT. When you look at it, right, there was no... The RPGT Act itself, really what, what the, the government is trying to do is curb property speculation. That's why you have RPGT Act, right? It's to protect the genuine property buyers. So you can see that real property gains tax came into force in November 1975. And there was two periods when the RPGT uh, was um, suspended. That means there was no tax, you know, that was imposed on the sale of properties. And this was during the 2003 to 2004 period and 07 to 09 period. Now, property market during this period was very soft. There was a lot of glut and also coupled with the worldwide, worldwide subprime crisis in 2008. So what happened was that, you know, um, there was no property gains tax imposed. Then what happened? Everybody started buying properties, started to remodel properties and sell. <laughs> okay, so everyone started doing that because they thought, oh, I can make money out of this and not get tax. But because you do it so frequently, strictly speaking, this is actually a trade to you already. It should be business. But people started doing that and it drove up pri property prices. Right, so they started gradually introducing RPGT back again. Okay, um, in 2000, uh, from 2007, it was five, and then ten, and then now it's going back to the full rate. You know, between zero to thirty percent. Okay, it really is to protect 
the genuine income, uh, income uh, property buyers. Okay. So these are the rates. Um, as you can see, if you're an individual, right, and if you're a citizen of Malaysia and or per permanent resident, right, so long as you dispose the property after the fifth year, right, you don't get taxed on the gains that you make from the sale of the property. All right. Now for non res um, for non citizens, right, there's still a minimal tax of five percent. Okay. So what are the exemptions that you can possibly get if when you dispose of a property? I think I've mentioned just now earlier that if you dispose of the property in the sixth year, that means after five years, you don't get tax at all on the gains. All right. There are also other circumstances. For example, if the sale took place before the RPGT Act came into force, okay, if the gain is 10,000 ringgit or 10% of the chargeable gain, whichever is the higher, okay, or it's a sale made by the government, or the other one is that if you exercise a once in a lifetime private residence exemption, that means what it means here is that if you occupy that residence or that the, that residence is fit for occupation, you can exercise it, okay, and it's once in a lifetime. Now, you're actually given two choices. Either you can exercise that once in a lifetime, or you hold the property for six years, and then after that, you, uh, five years, and then you can sell it. My advice to you is that try not to, if you can hold on to the property, hold it on after the fifth year, and then sell it. Okay, because your once in a lifetime exemption, once you use it, you cannot use it anymore. And that once in a lifetime exemption does not it does not matter when you dispose it, you can you can dispose it before the sixth year and still not get taxed. For me personally, I have not exercised the private um, resident exemption yet. So in what cases where you have a no gains, no loss situation, when you sell the property and the property or you transfer the property the sell price is deemed to be the acquisition price. Okay. For example, you know, when you have a will and the assets of the deceased is transferred to the executor, all right, so that transfer is deemed to be at no gains, no loss. So there is no, um, no tax on it. All right. Or acquisitions or disposals between nominee and trustees. Or it could be a compulsory acquisition by law. For example, the government has to buy your land for some reason. Right, and you have to sell it. So in those circumstances, right, the gains are not subject to RPGT. It could also be a, at a point, at some point in time, you may want to transfer some of the assets to your spouse, okay, or your children. So in those circumstances, also there is no RPGT. All right. Um, you may also wish to give give the government. You may have historical artifacts or heirlooms that you may want to. Uh, give to the state government. So in those circumstances as well, there's no RPGT. Okay. So when you have a sale of a property, what do you need to do? All right. You need to file an RPGT return. The seller needs to file a CKHD 1A and the acquirer needs to file a CKHD 2A. Now, this filing has to be done within 60 days from the date of the sale, all right? And what happens is that it has to be filed at the branch of the seller, okay, where his tax reference number and tax records are being held at, okay? So, when, when this will actually uh, help to uh, proceed, this, if you file it at the seller's tax uh, branch, it actually helps to uh, speed up the processing. That's according to the tax authorities. Okay. The acquirer, as you can see, they need to withhold this 2% retention sum. All right. I'm sure these are all handled by your lawyers. They actually have to withhold 2% retention sum and remit it to the tax authorities. Now, this 2% retention sum, right, you do not need to withhold it in a few circumstances. You do not need to withhold it if the sale price is less than the acquisition price, that means there's clearly a loss. If you exercise the private residence exemption or you're selling the property after the fifth year, 
So there's no capital gains tax. So in those circumstances, the 2% retention, some does not need to be withheld. All right? So after 60 days, right, the tax authorities will issue an RPGT assessment. So the seller would have to pay the balance after the 2% deducted. 